Internal part, uh, it's not with the Later on, somewhere in the 1930s, you changed the name to brachytherapy. Authority changed the name to brachytherapy. But still in France, the name of the procedure is pluritherapy. Okay? And it comes from a Greek word, uh, brachy means close. And uh, brachytherapy means close therapy, the chicken translation. My work is very good. Uh, and the modality is to send sealed sources, a group of sealed sources, inside the tumor or very close to the tumor. Okay, this is the definition of brachytherapy. Keep in mind. And this is sort of a historical picture. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this picture, but it is not a good deal for radiation safety officers nowadays. Uh, these patients are uh, holding radium pieces on their face in order to cure their skin cancer back then. Apparently they have not have any radiation safety officer. Okay? It's in uh, 1905 uh, from Australia. It's pretty much like uh, seven years later than uh, curing discovery. It's very invasively right uh, on the place in radiation therapy, that's right therapy. Let's take a look uh, what kind of advantages we have as brachy therapy, correct? Because we might need to know some. Okay, it delivers a, delivers a local dose uh, to the tumor, okay? okay? Very close to the tumor, it gives an opportunity to give a local dose to the tumor. The dose follow those fall. It's much better than we are using for external radio therapy because of the nature of the sources. And less integral, integral dose because the penetration of the dose isotopes that we are using in uh, brachy therapy has much less instead internal dose contribution. And with, with all these three advantages at the very end, we are able to give a free full dose to the target volume, but at the same time, we are managing to drop the dose to the organ at risk or critical structure. That is one of the big advantages of brachy therapy. What else we have? Feather air. You know, in, uh, during the previous talks, we, we spoke about the images, correct, the mass, and they were all about what? Drop the feather correct? In brachy therapy, because of the nature of the needles, applicators, and everything, you don't need to worry about the setup. We have some issues, but not as big as external radio therapy. And radiation of the recurrences. So this is the subject that we are kind of discarding a lot in brachy therapy. But when you check around, you're going to find it. It's a great tool, and it's a great opportunity for us to deal with re radiation and to deal with recurrences. Okay? 
So don't forget all these advantages because it, it's going to give us a power to convince other colleagues to not believe in Brexit. Because Brexit therapy is sort of boring, so that's what I'm saying. You okay. need to find a way to stick out. Great. So, uh, Brexit. We are dealing with high mobility, but we still have modalities like low children. Today, we're going to go through a little bit on the uh, implant side, specific door and header neck. Oops, let's it out. Okay. This is an interstitial modality. Uh, the picture is a tank base uh, with a couple of drains. Uh, so, lip, bucal mucosa, tank, tonsil, soft palate, and neck is a good uh, location for interstitial brachytherapy. And this is a surface mold uh, application, half palate, nose, face, pina, and scalp. I'm happy to say that that gentleman over there is treated by us 20 years ago in Ankara Hajduk University. Fully cured. And we managed to build that skull applicator with the help of dentistry department. Uh, I think we use like uh, somewhere like uh, 15, 18 channels like that, but 100% pure, and that was one of the uh, unique uh, modalities in the past. And what else we have in each uh, head and neck right therapy? It's an intracultural model. Uh, we have some standard applicator. Different companies are proposing different type of standard applicator, but uh, it's a good option. Now. So uh, before going in deep, uh, I, I just want to talk a little bit about something uh, which might uh, ring the deal for everybody for future. So if you're going to start brachytherapy as a new approach, as a new approach, please clarify your work and clarify your responsibilities, correct? Because at the very end, that's going to help you to improve your skills, speed up your procedure, and get much more benefit from the practice therapy procedure. Everybody needs to know who, what this is going to do, what nurse is going to do, what radiation else is going to do. And this has to be defined clearly you need it before you start the procedure. Let's jump to the uh, physics a little bit more uh, about uh, head and neck practice therapy. Uh, Brachytherapy physics, head and neck physics uh, involves a uh, different studies. Like the first one is radiation dosimetry, implantation, treatment planning, and quality assurance. These are the components that we need to watch for brachytherapy physics or head and neck uh, brachytherapy physics. Let's start with radiation dosimetry. See what we have. First of all, we need to understand what kind of sources we are using. Because dosimetry starts with radiation. And what kind of radiation we have in brachytherapy? We have radioisotopes, right, right correct? The very first common one is EUT-192. I think we are all familiar with this product, correct? Uh, in the past, we used it as an LDR, it's like with wires. I did that in the past when I was a student. And nowadays, we are using high dose rate brachytherapy. Uh, is this the laser? Uh, so, Uritum 192 is the half life of 73.83 days. It has a short half life, uh, pretty much like two and a half months, having an activity of 10 curing, and the energy is 3.397 MeV. And on the right, on the other side, you see the structure, it has an active length around 3.5 millimeter and the thickness like 0 0.9 millimeter. And this is the cobalt. Uh, this is not an old product. HDR cobalt uh, in uh, HDR bracket therapy is not an old product. It is sort of uh, out there uh, maybe for 10 years or something. And uh, as you all know, uh, it has about 5.3 years of half life. 
in two pure activity and 1.26 million electrons of volt energy. On the diagram side, how do I push the laser? There's no laser. No laser. No laser? Yes, <laughs> Boroko. You have physicists around, watch yourself. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's good. Okay, never mind, never mind. I can deal with that. So, on, on, on the information side, uh, I, I just want to show something very quick for you to understand. Uh, just look at the difference of the thickness and material uh, right after the source. The reason for that is uh, the cobalt penetration is much higher than iridium. So uh, that's why uh, companies are using different thickness to drop the uh, penetration of the cobalt salt. Not the energy, penetration. Penetration is energy in different two fields. One is the bound. So these are the sources that we are using for HDR bracket therapy uh, for the neck. And these sources, I want to show you a few things. Uh, you might think, you know what, just one source and you're going to take the whole volume, how that thing will happen, correct? But with the existing technology, these sources, different companies are have, having, different, having different step length and special uh, develop position. This uh, babies have a chance to move like millimeter by millimeter. We call it like step size. Every millimeter it can move, like 3.5, 3.6, 3.7. .7. And at the end of the day, we have a chance to create 40 cm active length or 400 millimeter active length by moving them little by little. We call it developed position. Dwell time is dwell time is the time that uh, explains the duration of the source at the same position. So we need to remember these two concepts: dwell position and dwell time. And this is what happens when you play with the dwell time. You see, we have a chance to optimize. During uh, the external session, we spoke about IMRT, VMAX. In brachytherapy, we are also optimized. We have a chance to optimize by playing the QL times. It gives an opportunity to optimize those. And after giving you this much explanation about sources, uh, one of the big things that we need to know as physicists or as department of health, if we are calibrating the source or not. Yes, we are doing this calibration. And every source has to be calibrated uh, after they reach the department. We are using different chambers. Uh, this is a well made chamber from DTW, but other companies are having it. Uh, and this is the important part of the dosimetry. Every time you have to find the sweet spot of the measure. Sweet spot means the effective point of the ionization chamber. You might say, you know what? Hey, Mr. Sally, why do I need to repeat it every time? This is the quality of assurance, assurance of the procedure because the position of the applicator that we are inserting inside the develop position, develop uh, ionization chamber, might change a couple of millimeters every time. So that's why every time this sweet spot has to be defined for your calibration. Another question might rise you know what? Everything is okay, but that much expense for that ionization chamber and time, just give me a break. These companies are claiming calibration certificate, correct? Why I should calibrate? Do I know better than them? Correct? They send it. It's there. We pay it, they send the calibration. Not the value inside the planning system. Why buy?
Well, so if you lay on this pattern, <laughs> you can have a chance to give different doors with different voltages. Hey, Charlie, you know what? At this day or age, are we still dealing with spaces? Just a bit. It's not time to change. It is the time. If not, we're not going to follow this rule. If you really exceed the maximum to the 70 millimeter, it's, you still give, have a chance to give the door to the target, but it's a big chance to create the grosses inside the tumor. We spoke about the grosses issues during the very first session. You, you know much better than me. So that's why we have to stick with rules. Parallelism of the needles, spacing of the needles, plane of the needles are very important for the success of the implant. And uh, for sure, not only in first tissue, in head and neck brachial therapy, more brachial therapy has a big role. Very simple. You know, with the uh, with help of the dentistry department or with other tools, you can easily create your own applicator. But again, for skin applicator, uh, skin treatment, we have to be sure that uh, the depth of the tumor is less and equal than one skin. And you can implement on the hard palate, lower gingiva. Of mind. And we, we, we really got good results with the, this kind of modalities. It's very simple. You see this patient, two catheter, a mold, and very appropriate treatment and very curative treatment. Let's check to the planning after the implant. Uh, in planning, imaging is a big deal. The first one is 2D imaging. Films or with the uh, digitally reconstructed laser plan nowadays. Uh, the thing is, uh, it's a good approach. I do not recommend at this stage using 2D bracket therapy anymore, but I strongly recommend to use 3D bracket therapy and 3D imaging, which is something that's going to give us a lot. Uh, let's check other details about uh, rectal vectoring and planning. The catheter reconstruction is an important step. If you don't have a chance to reconstruct it properly, it's a big chance to miss the tumor or give a high dose to the critical structure. So reconstruction is very important. For this, uh, you, you might need to use like the X-ray uh, dummy sources, okay, for CT. Or if you are using MR images for planning, uh, you need to use uh, MR uh, uh, compatible dummy sources. But before doing all this, you have to commission your system and make sure we are doing it properly. The other thing is uh, slice thickness for the planning CT. Uh, 
Authorities recommend two or three millimeters, but if it's a small volume, stick with one millimeter. That's going to give you much more, much more precision with the construction. Okay. Not many, not many catheters are a very, very big deal too. Okay, it's a big chance to make mistakes if you do not number them properly. I'll show you a couple of pictures after this one. Uh, some companies are having numbered catheters. It helps you to, you know, to number the uh, catheters much more easily because they haven't numbered them. Well. And you need to align those numbers with the extension cable. Uh, and sometimes you don't have that, that, that technology that the, I mean, the device that, or the catheter that you are using doesn't have that opportunity. I need to number them by, by yourself. But I have some recommendations here. This is the three part of the trend and planning. So after you number them, everything gonna run on this numbering system every day. If it's nine fraction, ten fraction, patient has to keep this number. Okay? Because most of the time we are doing VIB treatment. Like five five days, seven days, VIB patient is getting fraction like twice a day. But that means patient is coming back and forth twice a day, like a week. So you need to be sure that these uh, catheters are, you know, uh, packing correctly because it's not like they're going to keep them in the hospital. It's going to take them to the home and come back the next day. So we need to be sure that these numbers are right. And for this, don't forget to take mental pictures. Maybe one day you might face a patient, oh, sorry, I forgot, I dropped one. But so which one is one? Which one? You don't know. The proper picture is a big deal. And this is a 3D lip uh, brachytherapy. On, on the right hand side, you see a nice coverage with two flame. And the taste of 3D brachytherapy is this. It's not like 2D brachytherapy anymore. You have a chance to get an idea what's going on all around as a 3D picture. Correct? And on the right hand side, the taste of 3D second plan. All the day is volume is in front of you. You even have a chance to have great differences. If you want, you can have a you can get a five grade, five millimeter grade calculation. If you want, you can get a like one millimeter grade calculation, which is much more precise for you. Uh, so, we have 3D planning systems, correct? Everybody has it. So, in external therapy, now we have these different algorithms. Acuros, Colaptron, Pansy stuff. We are getting very excited. Yes. So, what's going on in uh, brachytherapy, correct? Does anybody know what's going on in, uh, in brachytherapy? How they calculate all this? Terribly. Let me tell you a few things. The basic thing, which, is, which has been used ages, is TG42. It's not a model-based algorithm. And that baby, that baby, unfortunately, doesn't count in homogeneities. If you have air, if you have bone, if you have other things, density of the applicator, everything is water for TG42. Don't take the husband. What is your planning system calculation hardware? Check it out. Okay. Because for the head and neck, it's a big deal because you have a lot of air cavities, correct? You have teeth, you have air cavities. You have to know about this. And you have air next to the lip, correct? Be sure that you have proper algorithm for calculation. Uh, so since last few years, uh, we have, thank God, we have this model-based calculation, like uh, co convolution collapse code, like Acuros. Different companies are having different algorithms, but please check it out and make sure they have valid algorithms for you to prepare 3D plans. Okay. Okay, let's keep running. Uh, I'm going to show, uh, and this one over here, the TG180T, I think it's a good t test group for the physicists to check it out for this algorithm. Who does what and who has much more benefit and what we need to. Okay, this is a good uh, reference for us to check as a physicist. Okay. 
sometimes you might think, you know what? Brachydarab is dead. I mean, nobody is having any publication. What was the last time I heard about Brachy? You know, it's gone, Orpheum. No, it's still up and running. This is a recent art article about uh, a the Noma. I strongly recommend you get to, for you guys to read it. Uh, and this is the, uh, one of the patients that uh, they, uh, they have in this article. Uh, they scheduled 18 fraction, 3 grade refraction twice a day. Uh, and single, single plane, 3D planning system, and voila, this is the uh, outcome of the treatment. Very clear skin, uh, great result, great survival for five years. Sometimes you feel like it's like a seal. It's hard to manage with the external treatment plans, the external machines. Another leap uh, article, another recent one. Uh, it's not recent in but 2002. This is another leap one. And this one you may see it like a, a different, uh, like the plastic cube system with numbering. So that's why it doesn't have any sticking out uh, catheters. So at the end of the day, uh, another 3D plan. And this is the picture about algorithm. You see how much air you have around the target volume. We strongly need to have a model-based uh, calculation to get a better dose of this. And they use like the 40, 49 grade, 7 fraction, or 54 grade, 9 fraction, different fractionation for different patients. As this is not a clinical session, I just put some examples, but I strongly recommend you guys to get these articles and dive more in deep to get much more clinical results and details. Okay. And this is a nose uh, applicator. It sounds and looks like a little bloody, uh, but uh, when you check this, I think it's worth it to have that kind of blood to get to go there. Like skill-based uh, result, and she's an old lady, by the way. Uh, another article uh, comparing image guided radiotherapy between two different modalities. One is BIMAT, the other one is Raki. Let's see who is the winner. Okay, ready? Let us see. Okay, target volume coverage. Pretty comparable. Good coverage. Yes. But I think you guessed the rest, correct? Should I, should I say something or you have the answer on the picture? But all axis, uh, all axis, yeah, organic those are comparably less with bracket It's obvious on the picture. See? We are proving some scientific proofs. Okay, so we started with calibration, jump to the construction, jump to the planning, everything is perfect, okay? But we have physicists in the, in the room, correct? Yes. And I, I, I'm hearing her, hey, Sally, what happened to the QA? You know, these are good on the future, but we have something to QA. You know, as physicists, I think we are like policemen. Policemen. Why are you a policeman? I was in you know, Policemen are chasing girlfriends, correct? Mm -hmm. But they don't know when they're going to steal something. It might be tonight. Maybe if nothing happens like six months, after six months, they manage to rob the bank, correct? So they need, they need to be alert all the time. And that's why physicists are alert all the time with the proper create QC growth. Because we don't know when an issue gonna happen. You know what? What was the last time we measured something bad with IMRT QA? I bet most of the physicists are having this complaint, correct? But keep chasing. If you catch one patient in one year, that means that means you need the target. Same thing for practical. That's why we have for practical. A bunch of QA. 
might be very boring for you, correct? And I give you why we have care for licensing and installation. If you do not have a good proper care program for licensing, your license expires, nobody knows, correct? And for a sudden, you have an inspection and you fail. Because nobody tracked the license procedure. This is again a, again a trace. Installation, many lives, dailies, monthlies, new source create, patient care. How did the patient care? Are we going to measure the dose every day? There are different concepts for the patient care like checking the applicator and the connector cables. I strongly recommend to organize to somebody to check them every fraction. If one line goes to the other one, even the picture on the screen looks perfect. That is a misadministration. Please check the misadministration on the internet. Okay. Most of the most of the issues coming comes from the calibration and the wrong patient treatment because of the misalignment of the cabinets. So everybody has to be sure number one goes to number one, number two goes to number two. Okay, Sally checked it and then hey Paul, please, would you please check again? Oh Sally, you did it wrong. It happened to me a couple of times. So minimum two somebody has to check those connector cables and the catheters. And also one of the big things, one of the big things, uh, don't forget to check your source position every day. Yes, but yesterday it was okay, correct? What was wrong today? No earthquake, no fire, it's still summer, no temperature changes. Again, policemen and teeth. You never know. Okay, uh, these are other references that I strongly recommend for you to, to prepare your uh, to prepare your uh, GA programs. Strongly recommend. Read it out and optimize according to your department. Check it out. Many details. Total treatment time, correction, uh, daily QA, patient pre-treatment survey done. You're like, pre-treatment, post-treatment, how's that thing gonna happen? Let me tell you one thing. One of our uh, bronchi patients was in PET CT, but nobody knew about it, okay? We finalized the bronchi. Our procedure was survey the uh, patient after bronchi, because you might, something might happen in the, inside the applicator, correct? And for a sudden, this was me. We were all panicked for a sudden. Some, something was wrong. I mean, we immediately, I mean, they called the radiation safety officer. And like 10 minutes, we were like sweating. It's unbelievable. Because we thought the source broke inside the patient. Uh, it might be a it like Yes. Thank God, the nurse came for a sudden saying that. Ah, sorry, I forgot to tell you. She got the PET CT procedure like a couple of hours ago. That got me an explanation. But don't forget to scan the patient. You should have scanned her before the treatment. That was our issue. We changed the procedure. We started the, the we start to do the survey before the treatment. Scanning first and then upload sources. Okay. And uh, this is another PG, uh, again, good reference to prepare your care program. Many details, many details. Don't kill yourself to implement them all. Create priorities. Pick the one that you can, you're gonna do. If you put everything together and don't, don't implement them at the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything. Okay. And don't just decide yourself. Decide everything with your team. Okay. So, uh, notes to take home. Uh, define your target volume well before the implantation and prepare a good uh, implant uh, plan, prepare a good coverage. Uh, otherwise, it's a big chance to make a mistake. All stages of treatment plan should be completed meticulously. This is very important, it's a serious business. 
and here you see procedure must be defined and approved by everyone, everyone, everybody who contributes, not just the physicists. Radiation oncologists should have involvement. My my, my physicist, she, she's good, he's good, let them do it. No, you have to sneak it in and check them what they're doing. Leaving all the responsibility to the physics team is not a good management. And thank you, Shukran. Thank you.